Today, I'm going to be talking about when and why to centralize state in a UI app. And we're going to be going through a quick example of why you might want to do that. So this is a diagrammatic representation of the sorts of problem we might get in the UI architecture, in a UI app, in any framework, React, Angular, Vue, etc. What I've drawn here is I've drawn a component tree. And we've got a top level component, some sort of parent component, and we've got child components. And what this thing does is it represents a car. Okay, you can see here that C3 represents information about the wheels, and C2 represents information about the engine, and C1 represents information about the chassis. Okay. And overall, this is obviously contained by this top level component. So this could be the car component and we can imagine these would be the individual types of components. And we can see that in a UI app, we, in order to be, you know, this may be a car configurator app, for example, and in, a, be, in order to be able to build our UI app that represents this car, we're going to have to start storing things like props and state component state at the top level to be able to map that and keep that uh, organized and pass it down. Now, this is obviously relevant to React, but the analog in the other frameworks would be similar in terms of the inter the dependencies that we normally create between components in order, and it's normally to do with this in order to create binding, okay? and in order to create our single page application behaviors, okay? And what that means is that when you click one part of the screen, something else updates, and data updates, and state updates, okay? And so what this really means is that no matter what framework we use, we've got to get these, these UI style behaviors where information is bound across the screen and things update. That's the whole point of building a JavaScript UI app in the first place. And so what normally happens is that we get this dependent relationship we mean it's normally done hierarchically with HTML by you know having top level components that pass information down to child components that will then work and um, either back up or work will work across in some sort of manner it doesn't really matter the point is that that relationship exists but let me ask you a question where does this start to break down what if we don't want to store information about a car anymore we want to store information about a plane Right? Can you see the problem? The problem is that a plane has got a different, although a plane is still a vehicle, a plane is different. One thing that a plane has got that a car hasn't got is wings. And so if we wanted to now come along and modify the system so that not only we can build a car, we can also now build a plane, we've now got to come in and we've got to start inserting <laughs> components and I'm sure you've done this sort of thing before, into this tree, into this hierarchy, right? Into this relationship that will represent things like wings, okay? And then we're probably gonna start to change information here. We're probably gonna refactor this one. So instead of it being a car component, it's a vehicle component, okay? But in that vehicle component, we're gonna have to have a, a, a component called wings, okay? And that wings is gonna be specific to only when it's car. And that means that we're gonna have to start doing things like putting if statements, if car, do this, uh, else, if it's plane, then insert this one here. And it, you know, what will happen is that this will become an absolute mess, okay? When we begin to build everything and we put all of our information in the same uh, in the same relationship this will become a mess because we are, can't represent multiple types of entity within a coupled and tightly coupled component hierarchy that specifically needs to store things like state okay and the state needs to be mapped and then what we've done is we've pulled the stateful representation of this system so that we could you know click on it back and forwards and we pull that into that component tree so we shouldn't do this and this is when we begin to get into situations like this, this is the point at which we need to start using global state. I know some people well, at this point will be saying, hey, we don't need global state anymore. What we need to do is react query. No, we don't want react query. And I'll talk about that in another video uh, because react query means that we now make the situation even worse. And we're gonna have to push this hierarchy off to our back end. No, what we want is we want global state. And let me just explain the difference that global state will provide to this situation 
What the global state situation will do is to enable us, instead of building the relationship of the entity inside the markup, inside the framework, inside the thing that is only meant to provide a UI concern, we will begin to build a more nuanced and layered model. And instead of having the situation where we go from component directly to car, okay, component, which we're doing here, we're going component directly to car, and then we're trying to come in with our, uh, with our airplane, right? And we're going, uh, where does it solve? We're going to switch things up and we're going to we're going to be more nuanced and let me explain what we're going to do and it's, what we're going to do is we're going to go right instead we're going to go component and the component can have state in it but we're going to go we're going to build a vehicle and we're going to turn the vehicle into a stateful representation and then from that we're going to build two types of vehicle we're going to have a car and we're going to have a plane, okay? And what we're going to do then is we're going to create a very clear line and we're going to have that state and we're going to pass it back into the component. But the component, and this is the important thing, the component will be coupled to a stateful, a global stateful representation of a vehicle, not a car or a plane, okay? And that is the type of situation that we need and we want and we should use global state in a UI app where we want to represent entities in an abstract manner so that we can get specific in our code and so that we aren't creating hierarchy in our components that are not relevant to the problem at hand. In other words, are not this, this is not relevant to a car and this is not relevant to a plane. What we really want is we want to understand a vehicle and then we want to build a simple vehicle renderer in the UI that will allow us to work with it. What we want is we want our component layer to understand a vehicle and that is, under, is represented as global state. And then this is the important bit. And then at runtime, as we begin to render our tree, as we begin to render our components, we will pull in the right actual type, the car or the plane, and we will use a simple UI level rendering tool to spit this out in the correct UI manner. So what all of this means really is that we want to centralize global state when we want to represent abstract types, abstract information in our system, which is normally a lot of the time because normally businesses have multiple different types and you know applications need to support multiple different types of the same entity and um, otherwise the business wouldn't exist in the first place because the whole point about a business is that it you know representing complex uh, complex information doing complex processes that's the explanation of when we centralize global state if you would like to learn more about centralizing things like centralizing global state i'm running a free web training class this week in it, we're gonna be going over three things. Firstly, we're gonna be going over um, eight principles that you can begin using today in your UI apps and UI architecture to enable you to get better, uh, more testable, scalable code. In the second bit, I'm gonna be teaching you something called the holistic UI developer process, which is gonna give you a guardrails approach to make sure that as you build your system, you're gonna automatically centralize state as you build it. And then third part, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make the transition from being a UI engineer being a UI architect engineer and understanding and how to, knowing how and when to centralize global state. If you'd like to join me on the webinar, what you do is click the link on or around this video and get taken through to another page. You enter your details in there, you sign up and I'll see you in the webinar. Cheers.